Hello. So welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the third uh, Cycloach interview. Uh, and with us today, we have uh, Anthony, uh, who uh, wants to share uh, his, the work he has been uh, doing on Jenny. Uh, hello, uh, Anthony. Hi, Theodore. Very nice to be here. And as uh, co-interviewers, uh, I have uh, with me uh, Vijay and uh, Daniel. No, it's me. Hey, uh, hello. Uh, it's me, Vijay. Um, I'm like closure programmer and super interested in uh, Spark and all the related things. So um, you may know me from some other audio stuff that I do for closure. <laughs> so then, that's it, I guess. And over to Daniel. Hi, so um, Daniel, I'm a closure person too, even though not at the moment at my day job. And I'm so happy to to be hearing what is going on at the moment with what Anthony is doing. doing. Great. Uh, yeah. So uh, the main focus of today is uh, is Anthony. Uh, and the work he wants to present is uh, on Jenny, which is a closure interface to Apache Spark. Uh, we haven't seen much focus on Spark uh, so far in the Cyclosure uh, data science discussion. Uh, so we're hoping that may uh, that may change and we might uh, understand a bit more. And to make this as good as possible, uh, we're going to start out with uh, with Anthony uh, presenting uh, Jenny. And after that, we want to dig into the details. So it will be up to uh, Daniel, VJ, and me to uh, take notes and figure out where we want to uh, to dig dig further uh, during the presentation. Yeah. So uh, over to you, uh, Anthony. Um, what is Jenny, and uh, how do we think about it? Sure. Sure. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. So uh, let me share my screen. Uh... Please let me know uh, when you can see it. I can see your screen. Great. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, talking for uh, 15 minutes before we get into uh, just the informal chat, I guess. Uh, and actually, I've presented Guinea before, um, I think about a month ago uh, in Cyclosure as well. But that uh, was in a lightning talk. So uh, I had only five minutes. Uh, so this is going to be an elongated version uh, where I can elaborate a little bit more on uh, some of the uh, details and some of the design goals uh, for Guinea. Uh, so this is going to be three times more awesome. Uh, you, well, hopefully so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the plan of attack for today is uh, I'm going to briefly talk about what it is, uh, then some of the design goals that uh, go into uh, developing Guinea and some of the future plans. Uh, uh, tentative, but uh, if we go to it, uh, so what is Guinea, right? Um, so I'd like to call it a closure data frame that runs on Spark. Uh, and the first thing uh, is that it's an idiomatic closure data frame. What that means is that um, it should be nice to read in closure and it should be nice to write as well in closure. So it doesn't it shouldn't look for it. And apart from that, it's, it's, a, it's a data frame library, right? So uh, you'd expect that it'll be able to do, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, typical stuff like um, reading, uh, reading data from file, uh, counting the number of rows, and seeing what columns you have, right? Um, uh, so this is an example of a group by aggregate operation in Guinea. Uh, it will look similar if you're a Spark user, uh, familiar if you're a Spark user, uh, because a lot of this would resemble Spark and method chaining that's very common in Scala. Um, but then also uh, it, it should look like closure as well. So uh, we can see that uh, it understands keywords uh, um, and yeah, uh, it uses this threading, threading macro, all right? Uh, so this is group by aggregate and, and sort. Uh, so that's the first thing to say about Guinea. Uh, the second thing is that uh, because it's uh, running on Spark, right? Like it's it's basically um, a wrapper uh, with an, some added grammar on top of Spark. Um, you get Spark ML for free, so there's a reasonably rich machine learning library that gets into it. 
so this is an example of how you uh, you know build a supervised machine learning a supervised learning uh, pipeline uh, and it will look very similar to uh, spark as well uh, but uh, in spark you'd have to uh, 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 just point to which columns are your uh, feature columns and then maybe you want to do a PCA uh, on that just to do dimensionality reduction and train an XGBoost, right? And then you put everything in a pipeline like this. Uh, then you can do FIT, which uh, trains the PCA, trains the uh, XGBoost. And then when you do transform, it'll go through all the stages in the pipeline and give you the prediction. So uh, that's what uh, training a machine learning model looks like. And the third thing is that there's RDD support, right? Uh, so RDD is resi resilient distributed data set, uh, which is just lower level Spark. So a lot of what you do in Guinea is uh, you'd use the, uh, the built-in function that's, that's available already. Uh, but then when you need to do custom computations, you need to drop down into lower level Spark and uh, that's where you do RDD. Um, and finally, it comes with its own uh, command line interface, right? And I think uh, I'm going to elaborate more uh, on this uh, in a bit, but uh, the idea being that it needs to be fast for you to start uh, and, and start querying stuff. Uh, that's why uh, you know, uh, it, it comes with that, uh, but more on that in a bit. But uh, I mean, a fair question would be like, why, why would you be using this, right? And, I think uh, it's, it's sort of like an intersection or rather the union of uh, why Spark and why Clojure. And maybe in side Clojure, I wouldn't elaborate much on why Clojure, but then why Spark is, is, is I, I think there's a lot uh, that we can say about it. First, uh, there's a lot of developers. There's even a company backing it, right? Um, so speed and scalability, uh, very often it's, it's, it's top of the class, right? Uh, in terms of a big data framework. Uh, and you get that for free. Um, runs everywhere. Uh, so it, the same code will run on your laptop, on your desktop, on, on, on a cluster, right? Uh, so that, which is nice. It's mature, you know, it's, it's, it's production ready. Uh, and uh, one thing I really like is that it has a nice composable API that really looks like SQL, which is something you don't get uh, with Pandas or R's data table, right? Uh, so that's definitely a plus. Uh, and why closure? I think uh, the REPL experience is really unparalleled, right? Like I think that's that's one thing that we can really uh, uh, sort of emphasize uh, with with closure. And you know, sparks joy. Like there's there's something about like you know uh, doing uh, your data analysis and closure that that's really nice. That's that I don't know. I can't quite put it uh, in words, but uh, the experience is amazing. So. Uh, so that's just a very quick introduction of what it is. Uh, the, the second section that I want to talk about is just elaborate some of the design goals, right? And for me, working uh, as a data scientist, right, uh, the, you work with this feedback loop a lot. Um, you, uh, you have some idea about um, the data that you're working on, and then you need to translate that into query and you'll wait for your query to start uh, to give you some answers, then you build on that idea to get more ideas, right? Uh, you, you know, uh, so you just keep, keep on uh, iterating through this loop, right? And for me, a lot of the design goal really uh, goes into uh, optimizing this loop, right? Uh, so you need to be able to go through your ideas very, very quickly. Um, and uh, some of the important factors is that uh, getting started must be fast, right? Uh, and secondly, uh, once you have an idea, you want to translate it into query, uh, uh, that also needs to be fast. So that goes into the DSL and the conciseness of your uh, queries. And finally, with Spark, you get this uh, really nice uh, query speed. Uh, you get the results uh, quite a lot uh, so that you don't get, your train of thought doesn't get interrupted. Um, just to elaborate more on that, right? Like, so the first thing is a fast and accessible REPL. So very often uh, you'll be thinking about like the data set, right? Uh, you know, that you're working on. And then you just have that one question that you, you want to answer. And uh, Python is like amazing for this because it starts up very well, uh, starts very quickly. Then you import pandas, uh, do your uh, query and you're done, 
I mean, you get away with this if your data is small enough and your query is instantaneous, right? Uh, so uh, Python is really good. And I want to be able to do this as well uh, with, uh, with, with Clojure and GUNI, right? So um, if I need to uh, do line new, uh, that's, that's too long, uh, like that's uh, it's too much time. Uh, if I need to do a require, uh, that also takes in some of the time, right? Uh, and I need to pick my dependencies, that's also not, not very good. Uh, so it comes to the GNI CLI. So uh, literally, you type in GNI, you step into the REPL uh, with uh, GNI uh, required, uh, and uh, you can just start typing straight away, right? It's still not as fast as, as Python, unfortunately. And a lot of that actually goes down to uh, uh, Spark uh, being you know, not so fast to, to start. Uh, but R and Python are definitely uh, really good at this. Uh, and you know, if your queries or that one question that you're trying to answer is, uh, uh, it's going to take you more than a couple of minutes, then uh, seven seconds is, is not bad. But apart from that, I think you still probably want to go for R and Python. And the second thing is translating that idea into a query, right? Uh, and so like being able to write uh, queries very fast. So there's nothing stopping you from writing pure interop, right? So this is what you'd write uh, if you're dealing with uh, vanilla Spark with the Scala interop. A couple of things that's not so nice about this is that uh, you need to uh, take into account that the types, right? You need to do this type Tetris. Uh, so uh, you need to look up, hey, array is different to seek uh, and Scala uh, sequence is different to uh, Java array and all of that stuff. So that's not so nice. So you can write this instead. Uh, uh, closure uh, data data structures and it's, it's just a little bit uh, nicer and it's quicker to write. Um, then also, uh, you know, uh, you want to be able to maybe interact with with closure uh, directly, right? So that if uh, whatever it is that you're doing is returning you a, sub a Scala sequence, a Spark row, which is uh, very much like Scala case classes, then you need to do this unpacking. That's not very nice, right? So uh, when you're done with the stuff, like it should give you closure data structures. So uh, we pay uh, you know, particular, particular attention on that. Uh, and finally, the, the other arrow in the uh, loop is query speed, right? Uh, and, and you get this uh, from Spark for free. Uh, There's a lot of people working on, 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 on performance, uh, Spark performance. So this is just a, a nice group by aggregate uh, example, all right? And then you, you write to, to disk, uh, 24 million uh, rows uh, with uh, a million groups. Uh, then GNI is, 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 is you know, uh, very competitive here, right? Because it's just Spark. Um, I think in the last uh, lightning talk, uh, I, I said that uh, Python was really slow, but that's just because I was writing my pandas uh, probably not so optimally. You know, it can be competitive as well, but uh, but GNI is, is is up there, right? Like uh, it's it's fast. Uh, some other uh, goals, right? Uh, I like to say that uh, you know GNI to Spark is what Clojure is to the JVM and. Uh, closure script to uh, JavaScript, right? That like it really embraces the host. It's uh, it's just uh, just using all the facilities and like the spirit is really captured here uh, by David Nolan's quote and uh, uh, during his talk, uh, Parasitic Programming Languages, uh, where he's talking about creating mobile apps for uh, on, on closure script, right? Saying React Native isn't our problem; that's somebody else's problem. And you know, Spark is not Guinea's problem; it's, it's somebody else's problem. You just need to make sure that the bridge is good uh, so that when you're writing GNI, uh, it feels like closure without getting in the way of Spark. So uh, that's that's the idea. And also like you get this nice feature coverage, right? Like, uh, which is not possible if you're not, you're writing everything from scratch. Uh, in the core name space, there are like 400-ish uh, functions approximately. And there's a lot of uh, machine learning models there already. Uh, uh, RDD support as well. Uh, so I couldn't imagine uh, writing this uh, from scratch and being competitive in terms of performance and, and everything else. Like, it's just no way. And, you know, uh, I'm only doing this like uh, spending like half an hour, an hour a day, uh, every day on, on Guinea, right? So uh, this is what, uh, you know, 
uh, being parasitic uh, uh, allows you to do. And also uh, being very shameless about borrowing other idi idioms, right? So uh, obviously closure idioms, um, stuff like remove, stuff like, uh, uh, I don't know, ink, deck, right? Uh, it's not available on, on Spark, but you know, uh, that we, we have a pretty good idea as closure developers what, what these things mean. So it should be there uh, to operate on, on columns. And then I, I use pandas, uh, uh, I used to use pandas a lot. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that's, that's pretty neat there uh, that doesn't exist in Spark. And, you know, it's just shamelessly take it. Uh, and then it's, it's uh, you know, uh, again, this goes back to like writing fast queries, right? Like it's there, uh, you know, uh, whatever comes in your mind, like uh, you wanna you write that then and there. Um, easy getting started experience. Like uh, this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine with, with closure, right? Like uh, I want the getting started experience to be as easy as possible. So starting from a clean slate, uh, this is very much taken uh, from, uh, inspired by uh, uh, Bork dudes, uh, Babashka and CLJ Kondo, where you know you, you have an install script, uh, you make it an executable, you move it uh, to your path and you're good to go. Uh, that's all you need to do and, and it should work. The other dependency is Java, that's it. Uh, nothing else, right? Uh, not even line. Um, and also beginner friendly documentations, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting started, I don't want people to get lost, but you know, uh, I haven't had much feedback on this. Uh, it'd be great if we, uh, yeah, uh, uh, some people try it out and uh, we get feedback on whether or not the, like what's the, uh, what's missing in the docs, right? Um, and finally, like uh, it's a bit of a, a, a hobby project for me, right? So it should be fun, right? And some of the stuff that I like doing is 100% test coverage. It doesn't really mean much, but you know, I, I like looking at it. So uh, that's Spark's joy. Uh, and also this kind of anal uh, uh, continuous integration pipeline, you know, just testing everything. I, I don't know. Uh, I kind of like it. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's probably the last goal. And just very quickly, some future plans, right? Like uh, there's four main uh, uh, modules in Spark. There's Spark uh, SQL, there's Spark RDD, there's Spark uh, um, uh, machine learning, and there's Spark streaming. So I'm working on Spark streaming so that you know we get like this uh, co a nice coverage of the entire library. Uh, better documentation. Uh, I think Django has an exceptional uh, uh, you know a documentation style. Kind of, I think, uh, you know, I'll probably uh, could learn a lot from them. So uh, I think that's that's next. And integration to other closure data libraries. Uh, I'm specifically uh, thinking about uh, a zero copy path to TechML dataset. I think we've talked uh, about that a lot. But also, uh, I don't know, Node Space and Oz, right? Uh, I think Spark doesn't come with a nice visualization library. It'd be nice to to have that as well. More borrowed idioms. Uh, I'm uh, experience and pandas, uh, Dask and and Spark, but that's that's about it, right? Uh, so other idioms from R and from uh, and Julia, let's say, would be would be awesome, and also smoother experience when you're deploying it on the cluster, you know, uh, because you know that's that's what Spark is good at. You know, we should leverage the the free facilities, uh, which at the moment is is, is not there. So th those are just some some uh, future plans that I have. And uh, that's it for a, uh, my 15 minute introduction of Guinea. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Anthony. That was uh, very interesting. Uh, I wrote down a, a few uh, technical uh, questions, but mm. I, I kind of would like to take a step back first and just go into the history because mm. when I'm hearing you present, I, I hear that you're you're making making data science work uh, both on technical and a business sense, but I'm wondering how did you get there, and and why did you end up with with the combination of Spark and Closure? Uh, can you yeah. perhaps take us back yeah. a few years and yeah, uh, sure. enlighten the path? Yeah. So actually, uh, working with data, I, I started when you know, I guess on a daily basis when I was doing my masters in Oxford, uh, doing applied statistics. That was the, the main language was R. Uh, so we all used R Studio, and uh, that was that was 
okay, uh, that was nice. Uh, uh, no, 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 no complaints then. And then I moved to a, an algorithmic trading startup um, where uh, we used a lot of Python, uh, a lot of Python, a lot of pandas as well. And then I started running into uh, a few issues, like uh, the performance-wise, uh, it was. Uh, um, I wouldn't say bad, but it was hard to predict. And you had to do a lot of profiling to make stuff work. And a lot, some of the stuff is, is pretty unintuitive and you know, it's very uh, uh, permissible for uh, side effects as well. So that, like, you know, whatever pipeline you, you come up with is, is not so uh, amazing, I would say. And then I moved to uh, Agoda, which is uh, you know, a bigger uh, tech company. Uh, they use uh, uh, Spark, Scala Spark, a lot, uh, and you know it's 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 honest. Spark was honestly awesome. Like, uh, and you know, you had this luxury of um, working in a in a big company where um, computational resources is just not an issue. Like, you're encouraged to think that uh, storage is is unlimited, right? Uh, and and you just work away with that. But then the problem I had with that is that. Uh, uh, the the main way uh, that you're encouraged to work with it is through a notebook, and this robbed me the wrong way, really. Uh, and now we're talking about a Scala notebook, right? Yeah, yeah, Spark, a Scala Spark notebook. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, notebooks I think is very problematic uh, for uh, maybe it's okay for research, but then when you start to productionize it, like you need tests you need like all the other stuff uh you know you need your terminal i feel so what i did uh when i was there was that you know this is the notebook you know i'm just going to connect to it uh, via the command line uh, interface right but then there was still some issues there so let's say uh it's, you're still really running a notebook so you you don't have control uh, much control over your environment or maybe I, I i didn't know how to do it and also it took like back then like a minute to start up so uh so it was uh i don't know uh like i missed some things uh from from python and pandas and that's like really fast like uh connection and just getting getting stuff done then and there right but then at the same time i love the spark performance and the, the api the like the fact that it really looks like sql um, so, uh, fast forward to, uh, 2019, uh, I've got Can my I own... jump in with a question yeah, sure. first. Sure. So, uh, what does it feel like to not have control over the environment? Can you give an example of where that was? In mm. So, um, let's say I, uh, you want to, uh, uh, add another library, right. Uh, to whatever it is that you're working on then you need to uh, sort of recompile your, uh, your, your jar and, and, and sort of like send it to the, to, the, to, the, to the master. And then it's just a lot of hassle. Uh, I don't know. And, and then like I've got this sort of hacky way of connecting to uh, via the, the command line interface. And I don't know, the whole experience is just not so nice. And again, like, you know, I was working on, on a, on a pretty big code base so maybe it was like uh, me not understanding on how to maneuver some some things right but uh i did miss the fact that you know you can just type i python and then you're good to go you know uh, you're like oh. you're you've mm. started you know uh, yeah because the notebooks uh, so the spark notebooks they were hosted for you in a sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right huh. yeah so uh, everybody was using uh the like I, i'm guessing connecting to the same uh I mean, there's like the resource scheduler, right? And so you, yeah, you yeah, ask yeah. for for uh, resources and then they give it to you. But then getting like the extra dependencies there is just not, uh, I don't know. Uh, again, it could yeah. be my shortcomings, right? So I just get like a very bloated jar and like everything that I could potentially uh, want and then just <laughs> put it in there. Uh, which is again, not, not probably not so good for when you, when you try to productionize it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, so I miss some things about Python. I really love some things about uh, Scala Spark. And then 
I've always wanted to do uh, closure. Uh, I've been wanting to learn it for like a couple of years before actually, uh, you know, uh, jumping into uh, the language and actually uh, uh, executing a couple of projects using it. Uh, then I thought, you know, uh, one day I, uh, you know, I've got to execute this this data project, uh, um, and then I'm using Python, uh, pandas, and Dask. Uh, I'm like waiting for ages and then I thought, you know, like if, if we could just do this in Spark, um, um, it would be okay. But then my other, uh, my other data analysts would, would have to learn uh, Scala, right? Or I don't know, uh, for some reason, I didn't really consider PySpark. Uh, maybe I should have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to wrap some things in, in Clojure. And then we already know how to do Clojure because uh, we've, we've done Clojure before. And then, hey, uh, you know, uh, some stuff actually works really nice. Uh, and I you got like 30x speed up on some of the important queries. And that was uh, uh, that was good. And uh, then I started building on 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 Gini. Uh, that that was, I guess, the the story. So I, I'm still curious about a few bits because mm -hmm. you were working at this uh, fintech place, and then you're working for the big place. But right now you're mm -hmm. working for uh, or uh, you're one of the founders of Zero One yeah. Group. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so what 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 led you what led you there? Oh, uh, so I got married in uh, in 2018, uh, and then. Uh, my job in Agoda was uh, based in Bangkok, and uh, you know, uh, you know, I wanted to move back home to Indonesia, so uh, that was the motivation. Uh, so I thought, you know, uh, uh, before starting, uh, you know, having a baby, right? Like, uh, if there's ever a time for me to to start my own thing and 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 maybe potentially fail, who knows? Uh, that was the time. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna quit and and do my own thing, uh, and yeah. Uh, it uh, you know fortunately it worked out and and yeah that's 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 the story I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess uh, you started the company. Unfortunately, it worked out, but you're doing data science stuff. I, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm still curious about a bit of mm. details because startups mm. can be really hard to to get going, and there can yeah. be failures. And... Yeah. So I mean, we we're a service based company, right? So we work with uh, people that have data. Uh, so I'm not necessarily uh, doing stuff with, with our own company's data. Uh, there, there isn't much data really. Uh, but then we work with one of the biggest retailers in Indonesia, and they have like millions and millions of uh, customers, right? I would, I still wouldn't call it like big data because it's not. That's like mm -hmm. a few hundred gigabytes of stuff. It's, it's fine. Like uh, it's, it'll run on a single machine. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's what I'm working on now. Mm. So can I, can I ask you one question about the interop? Because, um, yeah. I think that uh, first of all, I mean, it's a really, really nice project, by the way, I mean, I've been in, uh, been doing some spark, uh, for, for some time, mm. uh, mostly, mostly Scala driven things. And, and recently, I think most of the code is uh, driven by spark SQL rather than any of other things, because, you know, that's much more. SQL has more reach, right? I mean, there is more people who can write SQL. Um, so how, how is the interop story for, for Gini here? Is it something that is calling the Scala API uh, behind the scenes or how, how is it working? Yeah, it's, it's calling the, the Scala API uh, mm. directly. Uh, oh, okay. So for Spark SQL, it's, it's, it's easy enough to call the Scala API and, and, mm. and that but then for the other stuff oh, for and for machine learning as well but for mm -hmm. rdd and for spark streaming it, it mm -hmm. gets quite tough i think to to work with this uh to work with the scala interrupt so uh he is using the the java interrupt for spark streaming oh. for RDD. okay for spark spark sql and spark ml that's a full scala interrupt okay and and um, because i see that you are on spark 3 already or is yeah. it on Spark two or Spark three? Yeah. Already, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are defaulting to data sets instead of data frames, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, the thinking with that is that uh, I, you know, it's it's not really wide. Like Gani is, is we're, we're pro as far as we know, we're the only one using it. And, uh, <laughs> well, we you 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 never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, need to break one release and then see who is complaining. <laughs> we'll <after. see>. Yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, there's nothing to break, really. So uh, just uh, we have uh, a line ancient there uh, going on, and, and we just make sure we keep up uh, until we for, uh, release like uh, like a, you know a beta release, right? Uh, yeah, which yeah. Is, yeah. I think when we use it in production, then we can finally say to people that you know it's it's yeah, kind of ready yeah. for production. So yeah, uh, from that I'm just gonna keep up with with uh, Spark. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're using data set, but um, I'm curious about the um, how are you mapping because data sets are, are statically typed, right? You know, that, that's the main idea uh, behind data sets compared to data frames at least. Um, so how is all that, the, the conversion to closure driven things? Like if, I, if you get a row, then how is it converted into closure maps? Is it, is it something that you do some magic behind the screens to... Like mm -hmm. for a Spark row, there's like get all, right? Yeah. Which is, uh, which you just get get whatever Scala thing you get, and then I've just we've just got some rule of thumb, right? If it's a yeah. Scala sequence, convert it to a closure sequence. If yeah, it's yeah. A, uh, if it's uh, a, a Java array, convert it to a sequence, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. If it's a struct, uh, yeah. you convert it to another map. Uh, okay. So I mean, actually, that part of the code is not. Um, Super performant, I would imagine, mm -hmm. because you, mm -hmm. you're doing a lot of checkings. Uh, yeah. The, uh, uh, I think, thankfully, a lot of the stuff that you do on Spark, uh, it's done. The heavy lift thing is done inside of Spark. Yeah, so of course. Yeah, yeah. When you when you collect, or when you get the stuff, then it's uh, there isn't so much stuff there, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's been working okay uh, for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, because the, so if I understand correctly, if, um, if I download Jenny now, yeah. um, it's essentially uh, talking to local Spark uh, by default, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what's the story so... In, in connecting to a cluster? Because I can start Spark shell by pointing it to Yarn, by pointing yeah. to a remote yeah. cluster. So um, I've only tried it with GCP data prop. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you can do the same thing, but then with your uh, Spark config uh, there already, and then it'll connect to Yarn uh, yeah, yeah. instead of local. But uh, that's that's one part uh, of the project that we really need to work on because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, at the moment a lot of it is just uh, local, uh, right? Yeah, uh, we haven't had the use case to where we need to have like. Uh, a big cluster, right, to yeah. to execute uh, some of the stuff that we need to execute. But honestly, uh, Spark local uh, people uh, like to say that it's not good for like uh, small to medium data. It's, it's actually pretty good. It's, yeah, yeah it's, totally. I mean, I right. understand from the, from the yeah. performance point of view. For example, yeah. the cluster that uh, that I work with at work, yeah. um, its uh, storage capacity is three hundred and eighty terabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, with like a real metal nodes, like 20 metal nodes uh, beefed up. Um, it's, it's not just the data size, it's also the idea behind because the cluster is categorized, you know, um, everything is secure. So mm -hmm. I have to connect via, you know, uh, Kerberos tokens and uh, all that um, fun stuff, <laughs> I would say, um, because that, that would certainly open uh, a lot of more uh, folks who, who, who want to do this. As you said, you know, most of the data is living on a cluster, and and yeah. in terms of computational resources, it's 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 much better because I don't need to uh, copy all my parquet files, which are like probably you know a terabyte, um, yeah. onto my computer and then and then do the work, and yeah. it's not even a load in in some environments, right? Because you, you have to work on the cluster, yeah. and get a key. So um, do you have any plans in that direction, or are you looking for, uh, or do you think the design itself is is uh, you know compatible with that that mode for for Genie, I I, I think it, it is. Uh, it's mm. just that I haven't really explored it. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's it's on the pipeline. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I will try to write guides to deploy mm -hmm. stuff on on those three things at least: uh, GCP data prop, uh, AWS EMR, yeah. and Databricks. Uh, yeah. On AWS, so at, at yeah. least for those three things, uh, uh, ideally you can use Genie on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, exploration-wise, it's it's awesome, right? Because you know you're familiar with closure, you're familiar with closure. Um, how do you call that? Like the terminology uh, mm -hmm. that you're 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 giving this 
um, to people who are familiar with Clojure can get access to Spark really quickly without right. going through, without, without going through Scala or Python. Right. Um, obviously, the next step would be okay. I built my program; it looks awesome, mm -hmm. yep. but I want to deploy this on the on the cluster yeah. now. Uh, yeah. So that that that's going to be uh, I think really really uh, interesting point there to to. Yes. to Nice. It, it, it's it's something uh, we're we're going to look into. Uh, yeah. For now, uh, our use case is batch jobs uh, runs yeah. locally, uh, and it's a drop-in replacement for pandas. Uh, mm. and our our data frame. That's yeah, uh, yeah. Current use case. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's really you know um, hitting the right sweet spot. I would say because you know um, you are taking advantage of as you said Spark's computational engine. And then giving a closure way of it. So otherwise, I need to do maps and then you know the, the general closure data processing. Um, yeah. I think this this makes it way better. Uh, I think uh, on par with you know uh, data frames and pandas, uh, mm. something like that. You know, you're getting that 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 fancy thing. Um, and usually, Spark is is more on the cluster side rather than on the local yeah. side, right? So that's the right. Right. that's the interesting part. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So like even on 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 Spark's uh, subreddit on on Reddit, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, people are are saying like, hey, if if your your stuff fits on memory, you don't you don't need Spark. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which is true. You don't need Spark, yeah. but at the same time, if you do use Spark, it's it's kind of amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the thing is, it's also because you 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 know the functions, you know the you know you know the framework. So I don't need to learn another new framework to 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 do my work, mm -hmm. which is just the which is the interesting part, and then. Uh, with the same code, you can scale it up to 200 machines, you know, yeah, without, without right. translating it yeah. into something yeah. else. Yeah, that, that's the powerful stuff. thing, yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 Works on your and laptop or cluster. Yeah. Exactly. So during the project, like, mm. what was the most challenging thing for you so far? You yeah. know, building something with Spark or you know, Clojure and Spark and Scala? Because there are, there are yeah. lots of. Uh, uh, interesting tech there, um, but there must yeah. be some challenges, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, for, I mean, the first thing is that like I don't have that much experience in closure itself, right? Like uh, <laughs> I've been using it uh, professionally since uh, December two thousand nineteen, so it's, it hasn't been a year. So the wow. lang uh, learning the language itself is is, is something. Mm -hmm. uh, then. Um, yeah, uh, the Scala interrupt can be, can really be tricky, uh, but then a lot of it has been solved actually. Uh, like you take bits and pieces from other libraries, uh, and, and yeah, yeah, and you, I think I think you're okay. But then uh, some stuff like um, steel trades and like implicits, uh, they don't translate so nicely to. Uh, yeah, I mean they're 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 already. I mean, implicits are already um, a pain in Scala already. So I, I would really not want to have them in closure. <laughs> no, no, uh, you you don't. Uh, I don't think it translates so well to closure anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I mean, with the con uh, 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 how p the, with the convention and and everything. So uh, one pain point is that uh, you need to do a lot of reflex. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. And just inspect like. Okay, what what is this guy actually uh, requiring, right? Uh, and yeah. then uh, how do you deal with that? Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, and and yeah, I, I ran into a lot of troubles with the, with the RDD uh, because mm. uh, the functions need to be serializable. Um, yeah, which is which is tough. Uh, like yeah. I, I'm basically taking a lot from Spark Plug, uh, which mm. is uh, imperities. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I know that they're using Spark, but then I'm not sure they're they're pushing everything on on GitHub. But then whatever is there is actually super useful. Uh, that's that's yeah. used in GNI as well. So yeah. have you serialized functions for that? Have you yeah, sorted uh, that? Yeah, yeah, but I, I claim no credit for that. That's taken straight out of Spark plug uh, and mm. and using that model and then uh, and and yeah wrapping the other stuff on the rdd uh, uh methods and rdd ecosystem and yeah mm. it's, it's it's there uh you can use it with guinea okay so that means you're you're pretty much ready or well, okay I'm, I'm just talking mm -hmm. based on my stupid knowledge yeah. of five minute yeah. discussion um that means you should be more or less ready to switch to the cluster more pretty easily right because the main reason being serialization is because you want to send the code to different nodes on the on the mm. Spark uh, cluster, mm. basically. 
that, that that's why you need serialization if i understand it correctly yeah yeah i think you you you're an uh, but it is very impressive by the way i mean if you started you know you start a closure i i wouldn't pick as my as my first project if i was if i were to start closure <laughs> now you know because it's it's my second actually but yeah sure okay. mm. <laughs> but but still i mean it's still yeah. with with just uh, six months or you know just getting started with the programming language and then going to at this level of uh spark is a complex beast because i've been working in spark since spark 1 uh, yeah. pretty long time ago and there was no spark ml or anything um and also spark ml ml lib and that that fiasco um but using completely new language and then mm. trying to work on this is super complex thing that that's really admirable by the way so and then i'm you know i'm just taking the project because of this interview you know I, i'm i'm not usually looking for anything related to spark other than spark sql and spark scala because that's what i use mostly mm-hmm. uh, i know christoph kran and a couple of other people built uh, some spark uh, like spark um, how do you call that um like a closure spark thing a repl actually Rapper? yeah Mm-hmm. yeah 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 um but i i never got in used to it because you know I'm, well i'm i'm the closure guy in the team so it's you know yeah. <laughs> rest of the team is using python uh right. but anyway so my my point is that you know come starting with a completely new language that that you learned recently and then attacking a problem like this it's it's, mm. it's really awesome by the way it shows your um, you know your skill and everything but it it's 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 i've i've gone about it in kind of an agile way right like uh mm. it just started off with like can i do this in closure uh, <laughs> then yeah. uh it, it turns out that you can uh, can i do mm. other stuff in closure turns out yeah. that you can and then can i rewrite my my cu- uh, current query uh, that's running in python uh yeah in, in, in closure you mm. can and you get a 30x uh, with that then it's like okay this is something that I, I, need, i need to have right at that point yeah yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. so that, so that's kind of the story and and for me like spark sql was pretty and spark ml was uh, they were pretty okay to wrap and and closure mm-hmm. uh, rdd and streaming are a bit more difficult and for me even if did, it didn't have rdd or streaming it, yeah. it would still be useful uh, yeah yeah of course yeah 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 i mean streaming is fairly Well, reasonably new, right? It started with Spark to something, two dot two something, a structured stream and everything. Um, so, but but I'm curious how that maps to idiomatic closure as well. And I think you're you're making me explore that a bit. So uh, I'm curious about the streaming side of it uh, because there are these streams yeah. and types there and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. At this point, it's just like uh, making sure all the methods are there to be used. and yep. you kind of have to be familiar with the spark ecosystem to yeah. you and then you're quite kind of calling uh uh there's the, like a one to one uh thing to calling the right methods and in your okay probably mm-hmm. but yeah definitely uh, not uh at the moment i i don't think i know ima- en- enough about rdd and streaming to mm-hmm. uh, build another grammar on top of it uh, mm, yeah yeah and is it something just to uh your project or how many people are working on this <laughs> it's just me actually uh but then uh mm. uh I, but then the next uh if, if we have like a good fit for another data project uh mm-hmm. so that the, i'll teach the other team uh my my entire team to use it right but yeah, then yeah. My, my team is like three people right so mm. uh, So we'll so we'll see how that goes but then at the moment it's just uh, a little bit of fun uh, I spend like uh, one or two uh, pomodoros every day just like <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, yeah yeah trying to do stuff uh, adding stuff on gunny uh, yeah yeah uh, but you know uh, there's there's a lot of little stuff uh, yeah uh, I'm I don't know I'm just tinkering about really uh, no uh, yeah but it is it is it is impressive especially now when you show that you know the test suit and um, also the ci stuff that you are um, making sure that everything is you know working properly um so that's 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 extremely disciplined i must say i mean i, I i've been uh, i'm in the industry for almost 20 years and even, yeah. even normal commercial projects don't have this kind of shit you know <laughs> uh um um definitely follows an uncle bob's uh, clean code kind of uh, uh 
discipline, discipline, right? Which yeah, is yeah. something that I think not uh, not as popular in the closure community, but you know, mm. I, I don't know, I kind of like it, so <laughs> I could do it. Uh, but yeah, no, that that's how we write uh, production uh, software as well in Zero One Group. So it's just mm. a um, just a, um, a practice that uh, that just carries over to our open source project. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, uh, so because you, you you picked up closure and then you're now Spark, and I was curious about um, uh, y- your experience of um, learning closure itself. Yeah. So how, how how did that go? Because before closure, you were a Python programmer, or were you working uh, in Java? Python, or... uh, Python and Scala uh, mainly. And okay. Then, but then uh, I've always had this huge interest in Haskell. Uh, mm. So. Uh, Haskell for me is, is uh, I've, I've, you know, I still want to dabble in it, uh, but then uh, I, I I feel that like so I'm I'm like a um, I'm 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 a huge fan of functional programming, right? So that's that's really uh, uh, one thing that I really really like, um, yeah. and I don't think uh, in Indonesia uh, or anywhere uh, starting a, um, a a software team with Haskell would. Uh, it carries a lot of risk, but I still yeah. want it to be um, a functional uh, programming language. So yeah. uh, I'm, I think I'm left with F Sharp, OCaml, and, and Closure. Uh, so that was like the the three that I was uh, seriously considering. Uh, yeah. And then we met someone who 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 had really had a lot of uh, experience in Closure, and it became a, a no brainer. Like you, you want to have that mentor, right, showing you the mm-hmm. light. Uh, when you know you're, you encounter these edge cases, so yeah. uh, we went with Closure. Uh, that was mm-hmm. so switch from Python to Closure in December 2019. At, le- at okay. least my team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's impressive. Anyway, I think that's um, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'll certainly give it a try because uh, I haven't um, tried Closure-driven things, um, and and because uh, as I said, my day-to-day work is with a big cluster um, with lots of data um, and with the enterprise quote-unquote enterprise yeah. you know, way of uh, dealing with the things. Um, because I work in a fintech and uh, we have a lot mm. of regulations, as you know, you know around, around the data and everything yeah. uh, and security and all that stuff. So and I'm, I'm curious to, to give it a try and then see how, how it pans out. And, and, and I, you know, I really like the documentation and the way that you're managing the project. So it's super yeah. nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the one thing I was looking at is that it might not be uh, compatible with Livy, if, if that's what you're using. Oh, yeah, yeah. Livy server on, on Spark. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I don't think we, we use that one now. OK, so because uh, yeah. that's that's what we used. Because uh, mm-hmm. uh, then, you're, you're sending text, uh, either Python code or Scala code, right? So, so that would have yeah. Then I thought, you know, uh, you have something that's very similar to that, which is NREPL, right? Mm. So uh, if you have a master that's that's running uh, the cluster, and then you can connect to the NREPL of that cluster yeah. of, the, of that master, that's then master, you should yeah. be good to go. Good to go. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I just need to start the driver with uh, with NREPL, and then it can connect yeah. to that. One. Yeah. Okay. So uh, hopefully that's just. Uh, so what I did with Dataproc is just uh, grab the the GNI source code. Put it in a mm-hmm. in a Uber jar, yeah. And then and run then the, the, the yeah, yeah, run yeah, the yeah, Uber yeah. jar, and then check that the master is running on Yarn, and, and, and that, oh. that worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, mm-hmm. that's super nice. But uh, I mean, this is really fascinating project, by the way. So congratulations on 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 uh, I mean, putting it into production and using it, and then and also open sourcing it. You know, that's that's a uh, that you know, giving back to the community. And that's that's really admirable, especially with the effort that you're putting it into um, maintaining it and, and documentation and you know setting up proper well setting up an example. I would say, no, mm. um, nice. Thank you. So, I think uh, again, I'm I'm speaking too much. Daniel do you, or Theodore, please uh, <laughs> please stop me if I'm saying something. I, I wanted to ask a little, little bit about your team because sure. Anthony, you mentioned yeah. that uh, the rest of your team you were mm. you were curious about whether you were going to introduce Closure and Jenny to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you talk a bit about uh, how you're working right now, what their competence yeah. is, and yeah. what kind yeah. of obstacles you see in bringing them over to uh, Closure and uh, Jenny? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so I've, I've got this pet peeve, right, of uh, um, data scientists not being able to be, uh, as being not fully versed in software engineering. So I, th I think that's, uh, that's an, uh, you know, uh, you encounter uh, data scientists so without software engineering background. But I'm adamant that that's not something that I, w I want to have in, in the company, right? So that if you're a researcher and, and my team, uh, you have to be able to do uh, some backend uh, programming as well. And you, you dabble with the software team as well sometimes. So, um, so everyone in the team knows closure. So that's, that's not really an issue. Uh, but then uh, we, uh, we haven't had more data projects, if I'm honest with you. Uh, we've got like um, uh, mathematical modeling projects. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so we haven't really had the chance to do that. Uh, so, but then the next one, uh, probably, yeah. So, so what's the difference then between a data project and a mathematical model? Yeah, project? so uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, what, what I'm referring to with like mathematical modeling is that you, you go to the client and then you see their processes and then you make your assumptions and then usually it boils down to an optimization, uh, a constraint optimization uh, problem. Uh, if it's linear, then great. Uh, you use something like OR tools, linear programming, and you're done. Uh, if it's uh, nonlinear, uh, then you use some other tools, uh, even genetic algorithm, right? So uh, these kind of things, uh, that's uh, what at least my team is dealing with at the moment. So could you give an example then of what kind yeah. of a challenge that is for a company? Yeah, so uh, one project that uh, we successfully delivered is for a flour company. Uh, yeah, so flour to make bread, noodle, uh, and all of these stuff, right? So uh, they make their flour based uh, by... Uh, milling uh, the weeds, uh, but then weeds are uh, agricultural products. So um, their prices fluctuate, their uh, protein, wet gluten, uh, and moisture fluctuate, their uh, price, uh, their, their delivery might be uh, late, right? So uh, they, they must produce flour that has constant uh, quality uh, and they have their sales forecast with uh, ever fluctuating uh, uh, raw material, right? So what we made for them is this uh, optimizer that, uh, which is just a constraint optimization problem, a uh, large scale one. It's, it has like 100,000 constraints or something like that. Uh, yeah, so-, so, so uh, Would they then use that constraint optimizer to make decisions on what yeah. to purchase? So we tell them for every flower, uh, what uh, what do you uh, use the the what raw material to use and what a uh, uh, what you should be buying? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, and and that is not something that you would then describe as a uh, data project. Mm -mm. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just a mathematical modeling. Uh, for me, it's just like an optimization problem, right? So. You have a bunch of inputs, and then you create the, the 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 problem, and then you solve it, and you give it back to them. There is no machine learning involved. There's no uh, data cleaning involved because you know exactly what you're going to be given. So, uh, no, not not really. Hmm. Hmm. So I I, uh, I, yeah, Vijay. Sorry. Yeah, I was wondering because you're talking about the data science, data modeling sort of things yeah. because. Um, so what's your gentleman what's your opinion about like closure for the data science stuff because you know we're talking about uh, uh, obviously the cyclos interview and then you know we're, we're interested in in data science work and closure because this is uh, more or less uh, python being the the lingua franca of, of data science um and because you have experience in, in python as well mm -hmm. um, so how, how do you see closure uh, ecosystem that is help that that is geared towards the data science or data modeling work. Yeah, I think if uh, Clojure had the same kind of ecosystem uh, that that Python has, it's it's mm -hmm. a much nicer language and much nicer, uh, uh, like you know, with with all the REPL uh, mm -hmm. and and stuff. Like it's 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 a it's a much nicer environment to to be working on. As, as a data mm -hmm. scientist, I think. Because mm -hmm. again, like it all goes back to that feedback uh, uh, 
and you know, data, data exploratory data analysis and data cleaning is one thing which you can do with Spark SQL, but then there's plotting as well, yeah. which you can't really do with Guinea. Uh, yeah. And yeah uh, so I think that uh, it's, uh, but, but the, the ecosystem is not there, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll lot run into problems, uh, like there isn't like uh, uh, a, a mature NumPy kind of counterpart in, in Clojure. Uh, there isn't mm -hmm. uh, some kind of a scikit-learn there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and Spark ML is, is not it, right? Like it yeah. doesn't have quite the same kind of coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, so you're missing a lot of things. Uh, yeah. But then if, if the ecosystem were there, like I think I would recommend it definitely uh, more, mm -hmm. more than. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can we maybe talk for a while more about the ecosystem? Um, you, you have been uh, doing some time series modeling, I guess, back then where you were working in finance, right? And you have been doing that with Pandas and NumPy, so you could enjoy the time series uh, mm. facilities of Pandas, mm. right? Mm. So I imagine maybe that would be one thing that you feel that is missing. Yeah. What else? Yeah. What what is completely missing? Maybe what do you think that is far away to get at the moment? I think NumPy, right? Uh, NumPy is a huge thing. Like you, you do a lot of things in NumPy. Mm -hmm. uh, NumPy, Scikit-Learn. Scikit-Learn is not the um, and 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 something like Torch, TensorFlow, or Jax. Uh, yeah something like that so no, it's uh, like an automatic differentiation library uh, would, mm. would, would be awesome um yeah uh and yeah I, what what are, what are the things i mean a lot of people like uh working with notebooks i don't but uh i think it's it's very important uh to to gain that market share to make a complete uh, uh data ecosystem and as, as far as I understand it, uh, I don't know, I, I haven't played around with it. Uh, you'll probably know more than me, uh, Daniel, uh, but it's, it's probably not there, right? Like there isn't a reason for you to, to, to jump ship, let's say if you're working with a Jupyter notebook uh, to, to closure. Yeah, so I, I think mo most of these things are going to be there mm. soon. So there is a closure Jupyter. Uh, mm -hmm. project uh, mm -hmm. uh, by our, our friend uh, Klaus uh, and the about scikit-learn so I guess yes on yesterday's meeting we have seen some part of the ecosystem and I think it is about to be going there and I wonder what is completely missing and so mm -hmm. automatic differentiation is something that is completely missing at the moment I think mm -hmm. Raga has something on that maybe maybe Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but, but it's a bit of a you know uh, unfair comparison, right? Because Python had a head start. I think NumPy is like what ten years, twenty years old already yeah, now. Yeah, very mature. Yeah, very mature. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's actually older than Clojure itself. So you know, it, it's a bit of a. Uh, but I think that the best option is to, um, because Clojure has been like the. the you know, compatible with you know host on something you know utilize yeah, the the yeah. stuff already there so i think that is the spirit um, if i if i can comment on on the project that that you are building you know that it's just, it's in the same spirit right utilize mm -hmm. spark and then just provide you know fantastic experience using closure to to yes. get advantage of that system oh. so uh, i i know probably daniel you know more about this as well right i mean the the python closure interop interop work um, if we can get there, then suddenly it opens up, you know, a host of possibilities. Because that's what happened in, in closure script ecosystem, right? You know, because it's on JavaScript, and then suddenly you have access to all this, um, all these things. And then we just need to make sure that the the, the tools are ground, you know, yeah. built in in a, in a good way. Um, then it opens up like a lot of possibilities. Yep. Because you can't possibly say, okay, I'm gonna start NumPy, you know, clone in closure. Oh. And I'm pretty sure after after building two metrics, you know, uh, computation functions, then I'm like, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm not going to build all the shit. You know, <laughs> so that that's that's uh, that, that there will be a humongous task. So I think the uh, taking advantage of, of what is there and then making sure that the interop is is, is awesome. 
um that, that's how we got got away with uh, closure you know using every possible java library out there uh, yes. at least in the beginning like you know, and if you see most of the libraries that are the java interop things are very very tiny surface area you know they just expose you know the the, the build um it's a really small wrapper around java stuff yeah. so any anything that you can pick up so i'd say i think that would be a nice uh you know uh approach to fill the gap otherwise we we, we are such a small community and uh, well, compared to python number of available python programmers in general um, it would be a monumental task to say okay we're going to redo scikit-learn or numpy or, or and then you still have to reach out to the java system anyway because if you want to use numpy then you need a proper you know, uh, good precision uh, for for all the numerical computation that means you need to fall down to java level and then use some library there Mm. Like, um, that's probably right. I'm not sure about the Python and and closure interop because I see some stuff happening around there. Maybe Daniel, you know uh, what's happening around that, right? Yeah, so uh, he's an mm. active project. Um, yeah. Chris uh, and James have been developing uh, Leap Python CLJ, and yeah. they they keep uh, discussing it with users, and it seems to be fruitful. I yeah. haven't tried it so much recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. About NumPy, uh, so I think uh, Dragon's work on uh, Neanderthal is mm. a huge project, and it, yes. it does bring uh, really high-performance numerical programming with arrays. Mm. Uh, to, and so that is not missing anymore, I guess. Mm. All the lin linear algebra parts are really uh, mature and... Uh, but uh. I guess, I guess uh, when you go into some uh, specific applications like time series analysis, mm -hmm. then the ecosystem that you have around NumPy is magnificent, yes. and mm -hmm. that is still missing probably, yeah. Yeah, as yeah. far as we know in closure. And I, th I think really the the answer to that, at least at least uh, for, you know, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's just to wrap NumPy. And, and be able to really uh, you, you know, use it very nicely in, in closure because mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean Dragon's doing like an amazing job but there's no way uh, to compete with like hundreds of developers doing NumPy uh, they, they just have a lot more surface area and uh, if we could just wrap it nicely and make it so that it's, it's nice to interact with other parts of closure code and uh, I think that that's probably uh, the way to go yeah. I think we have uh, an advantage in some sense, though. Uh, and uh, when we write closure tools, we tend to write them small. And that's been said so often that it's become this kind of trope. But in this case, uh, comparing using Jenny to Spark notebooks. OK, you want to use uh, Spark with Scala, then you might have to use Spark notebooks. And then that just drabs, drags along all these assumptions. Like you want to use this, and you can't reload your dependencies, or you cannot simply add libraries. Whereas in Clojure, we have the REPL, which is this kind of small tool that just solves the interaction problem. And mm -hmm. compared to Python, uh, in Python, if you want to use NumPy, you have to deploy your thing, and you have to. Uh, control your dependencies and you have to do do that piece of work that also is kind of a solved problem in the closure space mm. uh, and in in that same sense i i really like um uh, that in jenny you just you just make this little piece that can be used uh, in whatever way we want to uh, and you also made the cli to make it easy to get started with but it can be used from the REPL. so it's not like the only way to use Jenny is through the CLI. So that's, for instance, since I'm using Emacs, uh, I won't be able to get uh, the same kind of uh, editor help that I would be getting otherwise. So I feel like this this approach of, of building the small composable things, uh, in a sense, counterbalances uh, the huge ecosystems that we have to, yeah, compete with. Yeah. But I guess, uh, yeah. Uh, for me, like Guni is, is, is kind of a small-ish project, right? Because like I'm not doing any of the computations. 
uh, it's, yeah. it's just wrapping around. So like uh, we can still have NumPy uh, in enclosure, right? Uh, it's just, and it's not going to be such a huge project because it's uh, just wrapping stuff. I, I, okay, I don't know. Uh, this is a guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh and and also uh but also like as soon as you do that then what numpy are you using what python are you using you probably want to standardize that you don't want to import this uh dependency uh kind of nightmare from python to into mm -hmm. but that that's the that's the impedance mismatch that you have when when you're bringing in you know uh interop with a language like python which is a bit of a different model, underlying model compared to Java stuff. So I think the the, the main advantage be you, being on JVM is that you know you can just you can interrupt with Scala, you can interrupt with JRuby, whatever, you know, because they they're all underlying tech is, is still Java and JVM, so it's much easier there. But yeah, I'm curious in terms of the uh, yeah and, and how uh, lib Python CLJ is working. So I might need to look it up uh, how far we are at on, on that one. I, I spoke to Chris recently, and he mm -hmm. said that it's, it's, it's all there, uh, yeah. with the exception of uh, the interop with PyTorch, because they're okay. they're doing uh, some some funky stuff with the with the threading. But yeah. uh, apart from that, like I think it's just uh, uh, nice uh, smooth sailing. Though okay. I mean, I must say the last time I tried out uh, LibPython CLJ, like uh, there was this really not so nice pause in the beginning trying to require all the stuff but mm -hmm. it might be because i was running uh, uh docker on mac which I, I believe there's a performance penalty uh, yeah 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 so uh if i had run that on linux it might have been okay mm -hmm. uh, but but the, really like for me the startup time is, is super super important because yeah. you you, you want to get started as, as as soon as possible uh, you, mm -hmm. you know as soon as your your thought process gets choppy, you're you're not building on your ideas. So yeah, yeah. So you you said you know you're you're looking for contributions as well. So how how do people get start? You know, can get a head start on 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 the project. Like, what 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 can they do uh, for the project? Yeah, if they want so, to contribute, if they want to look into any issues. Um, so like even as 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 simple as like uh, going through the. Um, uh, the, the cookbook or some of the guides and saying, "Hey, this doesn't work," uh, and that's yeah. that, right? Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, at the moment, like none of the functions have any doc strings. By the way, uh, mm. I, I really want to get a way of uh, to just import all of the Scala uh, doc strings and then just just put it there. I, I yeah. you know, that, that's that's in the works. Uh, and then, um, yeah, some some help on like uh, deploying stuff in the cluster. I think uh, that that's that's going to be a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, feed feedback all around. I think uh, would would be would be awesome. Because at mm -hmm. the moment, like I know it works for me. I don't know if it works for uh, <laughs> someone else. I, yeah, so, someone uh, did uh, raise an issue, right? Saying like, hey, the the tests they don't work. Uh, Turns out that they, they only work if you're uh, in a certain time zones, right? <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is terrible. <laughs> That's so much for 100% test coverage, right? <laughs> well, it's 100% as long as you're in Indonesia time zone. And then you're facing east, and yeah. your keyboard is rotated 70 degrees. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, so uh, completely repeatable, but only by, by certain uh, devices. Uh, not, no. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, and, yeah, and, uh, yeah. like, you know, I, I really think like uh, there's, uh, it's, it's only going to get more robust if people use it. Uh, so uh, these kind of issues would be. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I mean, that, uh, I'm not sure, you know, this might be a small digression, but um, I think that there was this uh, internet joke or actually based on some kind of fact long time ago that, mm -hmm. um, you know, an email can only goes like 500 miles. Yeah, right. I remember that one, like, you know, the, so there is a university and then there is this uh, sysadmin folk uh, uh, guy there. He posted later, and so, like, they keep sending emails and then th they get a complaint from the university uh, professor or something, people saying, I cannot send email beyond 500 miles or something. And it was fascinating because, you know, how can email stop after 500 miles? And then apparently they, they realized that based on the number of hops and then based on their uh, speed, 
of the um, of light essentially the signal fast passing through and at some point there was a router con misconfiguration so that is the one that is bouncing the emails back like so it's not getting a reply so from people point of view it was 500 miles and then from tech point of view it is completely different so it was a fascinating story it was a fun fun thing so <laughs> so it's something like that oh, okay no the, all the tests work but uh, as long as you are in my time zone <laughs> yeah, yeah <that> <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, but um, it's a, it's super cool, by the way. So I'll I'll certainly give it a try. Mm, um, I'm I'm curious about the cluster side of it because that will be my uh, if this works, then that will be a main uh, uh, you know uh, thing for me because you know I don't run any Spark programs on locally unless mm. you know just for experimentation. Uh, rest of the work is happening on the cluster itself. Yeah. So I'm curious about your roadmap and streaming and these things as well. So yeah, I think uh, the, 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 yeah. yeah, working on streaming at the moment, mm -hmm. and then uh, probably documentations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, yeah, cluster. I I don't know. I might get uh, someone from my team to to do the the the, the, the cluster side. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it is working on GCP, if there is a if there is a reasonable way to 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 do that already, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good start, right? Doesn't need to be like uh, okay, just like Spark submit and Yarn and yeah. all these complexities. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the problem is, I mean, at least for me, is that I, I'm not an expert in setting up these infrastructure. I just use it a lot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've found a way to make it work, at least on GCP. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I, I don't know if it's like a super dodgy way of doing this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, hey, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, if someone could point me out to the right direction, that'd be awesome. Nice. I, I guess that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying that we're. Uh, I think we're past uh, the hour uh, since we started. Mm. Uh, so perhaps take a final uh, round of, of questions and uh, then then finish up if that's okay sure. with everyone. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I'm wondering, uh, Anthony. I'll just uh, start. Uh, how how can how can the community help you with with Jenny? What what do you need? What do you need help with? We've gotten into this, but what could your yeah priority be yeah I, th I think there's uh, um, th there's an initiative to 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 try it out on beginners uh, I'm big on trying to make it as easy as possible to get started uh, so um, any feedback on that would, would be great and uh, maybe we can work it out together uh, how to make it as easy as as, as possible and also um, Another pet peeve of mine is like uh, whenever you're trying to tackle a problem in closure, you're confronted with a lot of libraries, right? And then you need to do your research uh, and, and, and that takes a while, right? And uh, which is kind of uh, bad as well because I'm kind of contributing to this, right? Because there's TechML data set already, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, established. And uh, making it clear for people like this is what you use this for and you use uh, a TMD for, I think, uh, I, I don't know the answer uh, to that, at least not, not 100%. I've got some ideas, but then um, making it clear for people where to go, I think is, is, is very important. And also uh, uh, that, that, that bridge, uh, we can have a zero copy path to TMD uh, so that people are not forced to pick one over the other uh, with uh, make, and being locked in, uh, that would be uh, great as well. But then, yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure where to uh, to start with that. So I need to ask Chris. Um, and also um, uh, library uh, uh, integrations. I, I think um, integration with with Oz uh, would be would be amazing. And a node space. So I'm thinking, you know, in my head, like uh, like node space being a drop in replacement to the REPL and you'll just uh, do stuff on the REPL and that, but then you'll have nice image, nice charts, nice uh, plots on your browser instead of uh, just, uh, be, uh, you know, just your uh, terminal. So uh, I think those are, I think, uh, some, some of the more uh, immediate stuff that um, I think would be, would be great to tackle. Thanks. That's, that's very exciting. Um, Vijay, do you have a uh, a last question? Uh, no, I think that I pretty much asked every possible question already. And yeah, I know that you're using, so you're using Wim to develop all this stuff, right, Anthony? Yes, yes. 
<laughs> and, and eventually you'll switch to Emacs. So you know, we'll we'll, we'll keep in touch. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Again, with Emacs, it's the 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 startup mm-hmm. time. Uh, just, well, I you, you don't you don't quit Emacs, man. <laughs> <laughs> So you yeah. know, startup time is only a problem when you shut it down. So you yeah, know, right. Uh, just keep it, it alive, right? Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Always, yeah. always. Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> I, I was actually wondering about your question about startup time because I could consider just I will always keep uh, a running Emacs server, so yeah. I wouldn't yeah. mind uh, keeping a running closure with Jenny inside that. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm. I'm thinking the uh, same thing actually. So it'd be nice to have like uh, the Gini CLI having like. The server, right? Work mm. in in the background, and then the startup time would be uh, one or two seconds instead of seven. Yeah, that'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's I in the that. pipeline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't have the. I mean, I don't have any any more questions. You know, it, as I said, it's it's a fascinating project. I really um, admire your your hard work behind this one. Uh, so I'm curious how where you're going to take it. So I'll certainly try give it a try, and if I have. Um, hiccups or something i'll reach out to you yeah, so you can help me out a bit um and, and i'm curious about the cluster stuff so i'll mm-hmm. see how um how i can put it into my workflow as well uh yeah because spark is something that i'm using like yeah almost like 10 hours a day you know <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's basically yeah. my work uh, so this is going to be fascinating project for me to try out thank thanks again anthony yeah, absolutely absolutely thank you do you have a question as well, Daniel? You know, on every conversation of VJ, I'm waiting for the moment VJ will ask about Emacs. <laughs> and I, I really, I hoped it to happen this time. And it did, in a way, well, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, cross promote something. So. <laughs> I want to keep things a bit separate. This is not about uh, other work I do, so it's mostly about you know cyclosion and genie. That is the main thing. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 really uh, happy to be here, and then you know understand things a bit better. Uh, and, and I I didn't know this much about this project. Of course, I went through a little bit to to go through the things to prepare for the uh, for the uh, for the chat. Um, but now I have way more insight into this, and all the all the hard work has been done. So thank you, Anthony. Thanks a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to chat today. No worries. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching uh, the third Cyclosure interview with Anthony about uh, Jenny. <laughs>